Hello and welcome to this new quick tip video. Today we want to show you how Motion Blur works in our add-on. Motion Blur is what gives you an animation a touch of cinematic feel and is therefore indispensable. It's activated very simply with a click on initialize motion blur and it's also very important to do this before the simulation process because only then will the simulator know what it needs to calculate the corresponding data. Motion blur is actually a render thing which means that you won't see it even in the rendered viewport preview but only when you actually render a single image or an animation. Once you have clicked the button, modifiers will be added to your simulation objects. Geometry node modifiers. We use geometry nodes because we can access the necessary simulation data through a corresponding node network. In this case, the flip velocity attribute is processed. And with motion blur scale, you can adjust the intensity. Motion blur works for both the fluid surface and all types of white water. And motion blur can also be turned on or off for individual components or adjusted to different intensities. However, it looks best when all objects in the scene have the same level of motion blur. This also applies to non-flip fluid objects. In the render settings, you will also find a field for motion blur, which should be considered global motion blur. The value set here affects all objects, whether flip fluids or not. And another important thing is your flip fluids word, because the size of your word has a significant influence on how the motion blur scaling turns out. The reason is that motion vectors in the simulator are naturally also based on the size of the simulation word. Please keep this in mind if your motion blur appears unexpectedly strong or weak. Regarding the white water objects, that's a special feature we'd like to explain. The fact that all white water particles are represented and rendered in the form of point clouds. The corresponding geometry nodes network converts each white water object in your scene into points. This allows us to apply motion blur to them. This has two advantages. First, when adjusting the particle size, you get live feedback in the viewport. Without motion blur, this wasn't possible. You always had to reload the current frame to see changes. And secondly, point clouds are less resource intensive. So your system is somewhat relieved and can actually render more points than before. What might be a bit confusing in the moment is that you have to adjust the scaling and the material for your whitewater objects in the modifier panel. So even if materials and particle sizes were previously set, they now have to be adjusted again in the modifier panel. The available materials in this window are limited to those already used in your scene. So, if you haven't assigned any materials to your white water objects before, they won't be available here. In that case, you should use the material library of our assets and then make sure that the material is set in the modifier. Okay, that was our quick tip video on motion blur. If you don't like motion blur, you can deactivate it with the remove motion blur button. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, see you soon.